Hey everybody, welcome back to... Mm. Nah. Alright, so, Happy New Year's, welcome to 2022 to all those who have not seen me since the previous year. Um, sorry about not being around so much in January, I just kind of have a lot of life going on, and I have begun the production of my comic that takes place within the Elf Wonk universe that the Auto June language is spoken in. There's going to be a lot of fun stuff coming out with that. Also, Eternal and I, mostly Eternal, have been working on getting nga.org working, so that's also been taking a significant amount of time. Here I am. Back in December, me and the Big Lang Gang put together a survey that we called the Conlang Census of 2021. Now, it wasn't so much like a strict census or a strict experiment, so much as it was us putting together questions that we wanted to know the answers of about certain aspects of the demographics of our conlanging audience across the internet and of just the types of languages and the aspects of languages, etc., that our people created. And it turned out really well. We got 1,033 responses. Actually, 1,033 responses on Google Forms and one manually typed out response by someone who didn't want to submit a Google account. So 1,034 responses. At that point, most of the data is it's pretty big. It's a solid sample. I'm super happy with how it turned out. Um, thank you to Bibliorating and Artifexian and to anyone else in the Big Lang Gang who uh, shared the survey to help spread its word across Discord and YouTube and everywhere else. I even got it in the Language Construction Society's chats, etc. So, very glad how that turned out. Now, we're going to just go over the straight up raw data, the charts provided by Google Forms of how everything turned out, our results. So, the Conlang Census of 2021, what do we have here? Out of 1,033 responses in Google, and you know, the, the one not in Google, where did you access this survey from? 67.5% was from YouTube, 9.9% .9 was from Reddit, I mean 9.9% .9 was from Discord, 9.2% was from Reddit, um, another 10.2% was from other social media platforms, including Slack, Instagram, and Facebook. And then it looks like we got 34 people or 3.3% of responses that came from other, which I'm guessing is going to be either direct person to person sharing or from Artifact Scenes podcast, um, which is interesting. So you can see there is a clear majority that is from YouTube on here. Now, that is to be expected. Most of that is my audience and Bibliridian's audience. You can take the results with that in mind. Now, our age range. Here is the age split up of the people. We have the biggest group was those between ages 16 and 19 was 36.5% of them. The second highest age range was 20 to 29. After that, we have a significant percent, 16.6 percent, who are between the ages of 13 and 15. We have 8.5 percent who are 30 to 39. We have 3 percent who are 40 plus, and then 8 people, or 0.8 percent, answered that they are under 13, even though it technically breaks both YouTube's rules and Discord's rules. So I left a, you know, a very wide-eyed emoji staring at that, because, uh, um, but yeah, anyway, how old were you when you started conlanging? This is an interesting one. The biggest group said that they started conlanging when they were 13 to 15 years old. Second place goes to 6 to 12. Third place goes to 16 to 19 at 23.8%. Then um, 20 to 29, uh, 30 to 39, and then 5 or younger was 10 people or 1% of them. which. I, I guess that makes sense, and I don't even know if I believe the people who said they did it when they were five or younger. I mean, I guess you could kind of... S no, I was seven whenever I made, made my first thing that could eventually be interpreted that way. Anyway, so, what are your pronouns? Now, this is where we got into a lot of people who uh, 
really, you know, decided to not be good people about this. Here we have all of our, here we have most of our serious answers up here, right? So we have uh, 74.6 use he, him, 19.5% um, uh, use she, her, 25.2% use they, them, 3.5% uh, used other neo pronouns, which meant several were specified. There were several in here that were um, unironic, good responses. But then, of course, there were a lot of people who decided it would be totally hilarious and original to put random fake things in here, like herder. Um, so, yeah, take that however you want to take that. <sighs> I sigh at all of you. Anyway, so, now we have, what is your sexuality out of 969 responses? So, the largest, which is still a, uh, a minority, we have 39% said they were straight. Second place is actually bi, so we have bisexual with 19%. Then third place, we have gay, and then after that comes ace. Um, for the, the rest come in. We have pan at 5.7%, we have lesbian at 2.8%, and we have queer as 6.5%, and other not list was another 3.2%. I thought that was really interesting, you know? I mean, I'm not like super surprised, but it's just cool seeing how, seeing the data like right there in front of me. Um, then we have, are you trans or otherwise non-binary? Out of 999 responses, we had 67.7% say no, we had 24.2% say yes, and then we had 8.1% say unsure. So yeah, what is your current education level? This is another one we thought would be fun. Um, considering the age ranges, a lot of it's not super surprising, but I think the spread is still pretty cool to look at. Right, so the biggest is high school. Currently in high school, or whatever your country or locality's high school equivalent is. Um, second place is currently in university or the university's equivalent. And then after that, third place is graduated with a bachelor's degree, followed by graduated high school, but not necessarily in college. I feel like a lot of the people who said they graduated high school and weren't in university were probably Europeans who consider college and university to be separate things, which I didn't really realize until a couple people said so afterwards. So I assume some people who are not yet in university probably put themselves into this category if they're in the European definition of college even though that it's just the same thing in the United States so we didn't really think of that until it was too late so a lot of people uh, s said either other or had a doctorate or a doctorate equivalent which is interesting I fit into this category the graduated with a master's degree as did 50 other people interesting what hands do you write with 82.9% are right-handed, 14% are left-handed, and 3.1% are ambidextrous, which is pretty standard, I think. Maybe it's a higher ratio of left-handed people than the rest of society. We can check that later. Do you play any musical instruments? We had a majority say yes. 46% um, said no, and then a majority said yes with either one or multiple instruments. Do you know any coding or programming languages? This is kind of like the flip of it. We had a slight majority say no, they do not know any programming languages, but a very large minority say they know either one or multiple programming languages. Which again, a lot of the people in my Discord server know at least one programming language, so I thought this would be a really interesting one to ask. What are slash were your favorite subjects in school? Select the subjects you actually enjoy. Leave subjects you dislike blank. So. Not super surprising that foreign languages got first place by far. 67.2% people, percent of people said that they enjoyed foreign languages classes. Second place is history, which for world building also makes sense. And then language arts, which is rhetoric, grammar, linguistics, etc. got third place. Um, follow, with significant percentages for art, music, and math. So, all of that makes complete sense to me. I relate to that very much. Um, <laughs> I, I, just, I just had to see it for myself. 
Now, what geographic region do you live in? We have a slight minority, 46.9% are in Northern America. Now, I know that is kind of a weird way of putting it, Northern America and not just like North America, but we are basing the regions that you're able to choose from on the UN's designation of global regions. So, global, the global regions labels it as Northern America, got, um, got 46.9%. Second place, was Western Europe, 13.8%. Northern Europe got 13.3%, followed by pretty much everybody else. Australia and New Zealand got a significant chunk. Southern Europe, Eastern Europe, South America. Yeah, there, there's not that many from Southern or Eastern Asia, though. Really not that many at all. Well, only one person from Northern Africa. If you live in the United States, what state do you live in? Now, as you can see from the absolute smudge that this graph is, it's got 51, no, I think 52 choices. It includes DC and also the territories as an option. I think there was representation from all of them, and the biggest one was California. And that doesn't surprise me too much. California, I'm pretty sure, is the most populous state in the country still. Um, yes. Then we have significant minorities from Washington, Virginia, Texas, and New York. All of those are also very populous states. Um, not super surprising. Not too many from Arizona, just five people from Arizona. Um, which is slightly tragic. Better than Arkansas, though. If you world build, is your world building subsequent to your conlangs, or are your conlangs made to flesh out your world building? A lot of people commented on this saying that it should have been, there should have been an option saying I treat them equally, but the whole point was, you know, when you're pressed down to it, which one do you choose, right? So we have 41.5% of people say they make conlangs first and do their world building second, then 40.3% say they do their world building first and their conlangs legging second which I thought was really fascinating it's it's really close um, I didn't know whether the blowout was gonna go in one way or the other I figured it would have gone towards the con legging first one um, I mean I guess it does if you'd say if you include I just make con legs then you've got a significant majority for that um, I just thought that was really interesting what type of media introduced you to the idea of con legging our biggest option was social media, YouTube, Reddit, Instagram, etc. Very solid lead there. Then second place is none. Thought of the idea before knowing it was a thing, which is actually the category that I fit into. I just didn't expect it to be so large, but I guess, you know, it, it, it's a fundamental part of life language. People are going to come up with the idea to make up languages all the time. Gonna, just like writing had several independent uh, geneses across the world throughout history. Um, third place was novels, Lord of the Rings, Watership Down, etc. Followed by other sources and TV shows. TV shows actually got less than other sources. Hopefully it's that Bionicle gang in there. Bionicles represent... Now, this one from the uh, Where Did You Find This article part is not too surprising but we have um we have what plat through what platforms do you engage with the conlang community um youtube got a solid solid majority 87.9 percent reddit got second place 61 percent discord got 45.6 percent and then everybody else got other stuff i'm actually surprised how many people have friends and community in real life that are part of the conlang community you know I didn't know anyone who was involved with conlanging until I literally started doing a conlang for my honors thesis in college. Then they started coming out of the woodworks. None of my friends care about conlanging. I look into the camera hoping one of my friends is watching with disgust. Um, how do you consider your proficiency in linguistics? Now, the vast, well, not a majority, but the vast plurality said that they are amateur but well wikipedia -ed. Second place is language nerd, so people who, you know, may not be trained 
in linguistics in school, but have learned linguistics to the art of learning many languages. Um, then novice is 12.5%. And we have my profession is literally within linguistics at 1.3%. Jealous. How many natural languages can you speak conversationally? We have, out of the 1,033 responses, the plurality is two. We have a lot of bilinguals in here. Second place goes to monolinguals, one. And then three languages is in third place, four languages, then five plus. Makes sense. If you speak multiple languages, are they from the same language family or from different families? Now, I'm not talking about macro families, I'm talking about subfamilies, like Spanish versus Farsi, or German versus, I don't know, Italian, you know? We're not talking about Indo European as a whole, we're talking about branches. So, at a 972 responses, we had 59.1% said they're from different language families. Uh, 219 NAs, and we have 18.4% all from the same language family, which I also thought was very interesting. Did you grow up in a multilingual household? 80.7% of people said no. So all all that plurality who's uh, who's at least bilingual, they all learned it on their own or in school. Um, yes, bilingual got 16.4%, and we got. 2.9% who said that their household speaks three or more languages. Fascinating. How many conlangs do you speak? Now this is a really interesting question. I, I had to know. And the results didn't necessarily surprise me. 68.9% said zero. <laughs> you know, it's the, the whole thing is about making languages, not necessarily speaking them. But we do have a lot of people who speak at least one conlang, making up like a little less than a third, which is pretty interesting to me. I wonder how many of you are Esperanto and Tokipona. <laughs> now, done with the demographics section, on to aspects of the conlangs that you make. So, how many conlangs have you worked on, whether you finished the project or not? So, we have, it looks like the plurality, says they have worked on two to five conlanging projects, followed by six to 10, 10 to 50, then one, then uh, 50 plus, and then a little bit more than that said zero. So that is pretty interesting. Two to five, that, that's like the average range of conlangs that the average conlanger has created. I'd say ever since Santa, I could officially put myself in the six to 10 category. Um, but that makes sense to me. Now, the finished is in quotation marks here. It's not in quotation marks here. How many conlang products have you completed to your satisfaction? How many languages have you worked on and then said, okay, this is done? 65.9% said zero. 19.7% <laughs> said one. 12.4% uh, of people said 2 to 5. Wow. When making conlangs, do you often take inspiration from natural languages? That is a solid majority for yes, 10.2% for no. Which makes sense to me. Once you know a little bit about linguistics or once you speak another language, it's pretty hard to not be inspired by another natural language in at least some way. Now, slightly different question that got very different results. If you aim for naturalism in your languages, do you often try to emulate the vibe of specific natural languages? And we got 57.7% for yes, and 43% for no. Fascinating. So, a lot, a lot of people are conflicted as to whether they try to make their languages feel like others. I answered yes on this because most of the time for my conlangs I say oh I want this to feel like a combination of Russian and French or something like that's the Noshin example. I can't really say the same for my cursed languages. <laughs> when making conlangs do you often take inspiration from other conlangs? This is very close 52.8% for yes 47.2% for no. So 
you know, it, it's it's interesting. The deeper involved you are in the Conline community, I guess the more likely you are to seek inspiration. But we'd have to get deeper into the data to find that out. I'll leave that up to you guys. When choosing morphosyntactic alignment, what is your most frequent choice? Solid 71.3% for nominative accusative. It makes sense because it's the most the most common second place is actually other systems which fascinates me um now i would ex i would have expected more people to choose like split intransitive or split ergativity etc but more people said other systems than ergative absolutive um i'd like to know what kinds those are let me know in the comments do you tend to choose more simple or more complex phonologies for your languages? Now, the very left is always uh, is always simple, and the very right is always complex. And it looks like we average out in the middle on a scale of three between one and seven. So people try to keep them more simple, but not like Tokipona Piraha sim simple, if you know what I mean which makes sense to me most languages probably fall into this overall umbrella as well like in the real world now how likely are you to create phonologies that include sounds you can't personally pronounce from a scale of definitely no to all the time now it looks like we have a solid majority of people who try to include less or no sounds that they can't pronounce Interesting bump in here, probably my my cursed conline crowd, G gum smack gang. <laughs> now, what approximate fraction of your conlangs do you consider to be naturalistic? Now it's obviously on a sliding scale, so it goes from zero percent to a hundred percent. It looks like the average is eighty percent of people's conlangs they consider to be naturalistic, but people definitely aim more naturalistic than less. <clears throat> and you can see the exact converse of that with this question. What approximate percentage of your conlangs do you consider engineered? And we have a lot of people who said pretty much none of them. And very few people who said all of them. Again, makes sense to me. Now, what approximate percentage of your conlangs are auxiliary languages? I thought this would be fascinating because... You know, a lot of people may have gotten into conlang via conlang critic slash Jan Meesley. Um, and Jan Meesley mostly, not all the time, but mostly works on auxiliary languages. So I figured there would be a larger percentage of people in the YouTube based, YouTube majority conlang community who, you know, would make auxiliary languages. But the vast majority of people said, nope, none of them. I do not do auxiliary languages. I fit into that category. I kind of want to now that I see how rare it is. Um, it's just weird because Instagram, like Conlang Instagram, is full of oxlangs. Like it's majority oxlangs on on Conlang Instagram, if I do say so for myself. Um, so <laughs> now we had a couple questions related to auxiliary languages. And obviously this big chunk is NA, I don't make oxlangs. Um, but when making an oxlang, how is it intended to be used? And we have, I can't even tell what the majorities are in here. So it looks like the biggest one here is as a worldwide universal language, which is interesting. Second place looks like it goes to other. Cool. Let me know what your other is, Oxlang makers. Um, then we have internationally between speakers of languages within a, sim a single family, like a unified Germanic or inter-Slavic or something like that. And then we have internationally between speakers of languages from different language families. That's not at all how I expected those results to come out, but it is interesting and it is the truth according to 1,033 of you. Now. Which of the following features have you implemented in a conlang? And these are just various common things that people like to put in their languages and show off in their showcases, etc. The Big Lang Gang and I came up with what things to put in here. 
And you can see the choices. Our biggest, most common ones are grammatical case, followed by number marking, grammatical gender, verb agreement, and vowel harmony. Um, very few people have tried consonant harmony or numeral classifiers or topic marking or evidentiality. So if you want to be edgy and hilarious and original, I want to try those out. Have you ever tried to make up new linguistic concepts that don't exist in natural languages? Now, this is an interesting one because when I first tried making the very first version of Autojune, I wanted it to be nothing like any language that existed in real life. So I thought I was making up a bunch of linguistic concepts that don't exist in natural languages. So I just wanted to see how this would turn out when people were asked. And so 41.9% of people said yes, which like, I, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> 31.9% of people said, I'm not sure, which is, which is a good answer. I think, I think I put that, I think I answered that. Yeah. Um, and then no was 26.1%. Do you make conscripts with your languages? 69.5% of people said, yes, they do make conscripts for their languages. Then 19.4 said, no, I don't make conscripts. And 11.1% people said they make scripts, but they don't really pair them with conlangs. Which, this is actually pretty much exactly how I expected this to pan out. What types of conscripts have you created to your satisfaction? Now, alphabets gets a strong majority, followed by abugidas, then syllabaries, then abjads. N.A. <laughs> um, with logographies coming in last place. Very fascinating. What approximate percentage of your conlangs do you consider joke languages? This was the me question in here. Um, now, most people say, no, nope, none of them. Uh, but we got 11 people who say all of them. <laughs> and it's pretty much a little zip curve going, going from one end to the other. What approximate percentage of your conlangs are intended to be communicated with means other than by a human mouth, like animal languages, sign languages, computer languages, etc.? Again, a strong majority for none of them at all. But we do have an increase over here of people saying that all of their languages are meant to be communicated by means other than the human mouth. So that's, it's interesting to me that that's more popular than joke languages. It really shouldn't be, but you know, considering what I do, I feel slightly flabbergasted. Oh God. <laughs> Here's the most hated question of the entire thing, right? Like I got so many comments saying like, why does this exist? Now it was partially a joke and partially actual interest. I'd say 60% joke. This is every case listed on Wikipedia's list of grammatical cases. <laughs> like I went through the entire list of grammatical cases and put it on there and let people check off whether they use them in their languages, whether they don't use their in their languages, or whether they don't even know what they are, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> they start out with the common ones, nominative, accusative, dative, genitive, locative, instrumental, and the list just keeps on going and keeps on going. And by the time you get superlative, you're in a no majority with an ever rising amount of I don't knows. Does I don't know ever reach a majority? No, no, it does not. <laughs> um, but look at that like identical and revertative i i couldn't even name what those actually mean and obviously most people couldn't either um we're not going to be putting that into future ones i just had to see how many people would get the fact that it's literally the list of cases from uh, wikipedia this is a fun one which aspect of conlanging do you enjoy the most and we have phonology on top second place is evolution surprised me i i would not have expected evolution to be the fav the second favorite 
um, followed by morphology, followed by syntax, then lexicon, um, then pragmatics, other, and allophony. I really like allophony. I mean, I wouldn't put it as my favorite, so I wouldn't have chosen it either. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't have expected it to be at the bottom. Now, which aspect of conlang do you find the most difficult? Lexicon is rated the most difficult. I guess people just trying to come up with the actual like roots, the actual words to fit their language. Followed by evolution, which makes sense. Followed by syntax, then pragmatics, then morphology, then allophony, then phonology, and other. Wow. I love making lexicon. I mean, I mostly like have a word generator generate every single possibility and then I go through it and then I pick ones that feel the most like what I should do. But I have fun with that, you know? Um, evolution makes sense though. Now, which aspect of conlanging do you find the least important to considering a project complete? And we got allophony in first place, followed closely by evolution. So those are what people ranked as the least important to considering a project done. Wow. And it looks like phonology, <laughs> phonology and syntax were deemed the most important to considering a project done, which, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. That very much makes sense. This overall makes sense. Which aspects of language have you tried to incorporate to make a language feel naturalistic and lived in? Select all that you've attempted. Now we got a strong majority for proto-language and language families, followed by dialects and accents, followed by slang, followed by grammatical incongruities, purposeful mistakes and overanalyzations, followed by contractions and elisions, followed by puns, jokes, and other creative wordplay, and then other, and then last place goes to idiolects for individual characters in your worlds, which that is something that is going to be appearing in my comic a lot. <laughs> Hopefully, if I can do it right. Now, this is the end. This is uh, just a general little question about how people judge this overall survey. Looks like we had a slim majority. People say right amount of questions, good questions overall. Um, we had right amount of questions, but the questions could be improved, which I agree. Um, too many questions. They're probably talking about the case list, in which case I agree. Otherwise, I think it's okay. Um, good questions, but too few of them got 5.9%. Um, I mean, I guess in place of the big case list question, we'll make a few other questions based on more research focused things for next year. And then not enough questions and, you know, just, just not enough questions got 1.7%. And then we got a lot of really good comments, and then also a couple bad comments. Um, most of the bad comments were the transphobic people uh, who made up memes for their pronouns, talking about how we, we shouldn't we shouldn't have to put the pronouns in there. I was like, okay, you guys, come on, grow up. And anyway, yeah, there we go. This was a long video. I'm gonna leave a link to the data on this in the description. Um, and again, there's some transphobic stuff in there, you know, like the, there just is. Obviously, that's not that's not us saying or condoning those things. Um, so when you go through that data, if you see some offensive stuff in there, just know that that was annoying people putting that annoying stuff in there and just move on. <sighs> I sigh. Other than that, make some cool graphs out of it. Um, send them to me on Reddit or on Discord or whatever and help help us out in the process of making this deeper analysis video that'll come out at some point in the future. I've got lots of stuff going on. Um, I am working on this comic hardcore. You can see sneak peeks of it if you are a patron. Um, yes, my Patreon has increased by a couple members. Um, recently, I am very happy about that. Thank you to Pig Flyer for coming back and for Babalingua. I love your channel, by the way. Um, 
yes, thank you both for joining the Patreon, the Natreon. Um, and for anyone else who wants to join that, you'll get um, the special Discord chat. You'll get to see the development of my comic behind the scenes and just other aspects of behind the scenes stuff about my life. Um, and you'll get to, you know, have input in the videos and stuff. Suggest video ideas, suggest things that I should do. So that's what that's all about. Keeps the Minecraft server going. Um, it keeps my equipment put together. This camera is dying soon, so I'm gonna have to buy a new camera. Who knows how much that's gonna cost. Blah, blah, blah. I would appreciate it if you joined the Patreon and we could have personal chats and stuff all the time. I like, I love talking to my patrons. I love hanging out with them on Discord and messages and emails and stuff. So, with that, thank you very much. I will see you all in the next video. I've got lots going on and lots of things are coming down the pipeline. <laughs> Don't, you, you better be getting excited. I know I'm sorry I wasn't around in January, but you better be getting excited for what's coming up because I'm very excited. This is going to be good. This is going to be very good. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Nga. Apparently, I can't stop moving because the camera's breaking. This camera's falling apart. Here we are at the Conlang census. Let's get onto a screen that is not my face because every time the camera goes to my face, the screen just pauses. Ugh. And now it's not pausing. <laughs>